as an emotional Knicks fan, I want the heat. I want revenge. I want revenge for Brunson for last year. I want revenge for Julius Randle. I want revenge for Patrick Ewan, Charlie Ward. The whole nine. (laughs) Bring back the rivalry. We need it back. And, you know, I think with the Heat versus the Sixers, it's a a, uh, reputation versus reality, right? The Heat's reputation. Will they turn it on in the playoffs? The Spolster factor, playoff Jimmy and the whole nine yards. But as Jonathan said, in reality, they haven't been playing their best basketball. They have a number, number of guys recovering from injury. Terry Rozier with the neck, uh, Duncan Robinson recovering. So it, it's unclear which Heat team is going to show up in the playoffs. And the reality is the Philadelphia 76ers, next to the Knicks, are the hottest team in the Eastern Conference. Yeah, they won eight straight. They're getting an MVP. They got an MVP back fresh, roughly. Now, he got a little bit hurt, dinged up uh, the, the other night. But you get a Joel Embiid back with Tyrese Maxey. A ridiculous dynamic duo. As Jonathan Macri said, a 760 win percentage when those yeah. two guys are on the court. They have depth. Buddy Heald shooting the ball well as of late. Kelly Oubre, an erratic player, has asserted himself as a legit number three candidate next to those two yeah. guys. And so they have leadership with Kyle Lowry, an extension of Nick Nurse on the court. And as I just mentioned, Nick Nurse, he's not Doc Rivers. <laughs> so they have, I believe, a Shots coaching. Shot. Shots fired. Hey, Doc, Doc once, once Nick always Nick, he, he can come back. <laughs> Poor to the Doc cookout. catching shrapnel from the Doc, SNY stick. Doc, we love you, man. You can always come to the cookout. But I think that can change things for the Sixers, right. just in terms of the adjustments that Nick's nurse might throw out there. Maybe he throws some wild cards there. Yeah. Philadelphia, a deep team. They can handle the Knicks in terms of being physical, in terms of playing big. And so I think they're a more dangerous matchup than the Miami Heat right now. Philadelphia this year, 29-7 and seven when Joel Embiid and Tyrese Maxey are both in the lineup. That is a 66-win pace. Now, if you go look at their schedule, there was some quite a few patsies uh, in there, that portion, when they got those wins. But we know what they are. Their net rating says what they are when those guys are both in the lineup. They're an excellent team. And like I just talked about, the Knicks don't really have a lot of weaknesses. I don't think the Sixers have many either. The Heat, I understand, may uh, evoke a lot of, you know, worries uh, from many members of the fan base, older members who remember the 90s and certainly uh, who remember last season. That said, this is a different Heat team than the one the Knicks lost to um, in the playoffs last year. Last year in the regular season entering the playoffs, the Heat were, I think, the second or third best team in clutch games in terms of net rating. And more than that, they were the seventh best offense in clutch uh, spots in the NBA last season. This season, they are a bottom four offense in clutch moments, and they are a bottom three team overall in terms of clutch net rating. They have had issues uh, in close games all year long. That is how they succeeded last year. I don't believe the same formula is there for them this year. So uh, for me, I would, for as much as it would be tough, I would take my chances against the Heat before the six. So I think it's just because of Joel Embiid. I mean, maybe it's uh, reductive. Maybe I'm not digging in enough, but I just see Embiid as as this huge force in any seven-game series. And even if he's not scoring the ball, you still have to deal with him. He's still going to get you in foul trouble. And uh, it, it just presents a huge, huge challenge for any team that faces them over seven games, you know, assuming he's healthy. He sat out the regular season finale. Uh, Tim Bontemps reported that it was just precautionary, so we'll assume he's healthy. Uh, I think if they get through there, the tougher matchup. So if you're talking about if you're the Knicks, who do you want to face? Then it's Miami. I mean, Miami, I understand the history. I understand how many times they've come from the bottom of uh, the standings to make a huge run, and I don't want to discount that. But it seems like, you know, no Gabe Vincent, no Max Struss. This team is not the same as it was although nobody saw last year coming so maybe that's a little short-sighted but even you know with Tyler Hero he'll be back and he's gonna be healthy and it just doesn't seem like the same offense and we haven't seen Jimmy Butler lock in and and dominate games yet at all I don't think uh towards the end of the regular season so maybe he flips a switch for the play-in but I think given all of that I would I would go uh Miami over Philly if I was the Knicks and I had a Philadelphia is the opponent that I probably would prefer only mm-hmm. because, you know, confidence comes from demonstrated performance, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. The one thing I know is that the Knicks went into Philadelphia and won both games. Mm-hmm. They've already won that. The Knicks went into Philadelphia and won by 30 when Embiid was on the floor. Mm-hmm. Like he was in the game and they still smoked them. Um, I have three guys that are my main players 
that that's home to them. They own that building when they played at Villanova. You know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah, yeah. there's a comfort level that they have walking in that place. That's like, yeah. So there's that. So I feel like it's a little less of a house of horrors kind of feeling when you got to play on the road. That's one. Two, the last time I saw Joel Embiid play in a game, he landed funny, mm. started limping, left the game. Mm. Now he did come back. And they did say that if he had to, he would have played Sunday. They just were resting him for precautions and all that stuff. But he'll be ready to go tomorrow night against the Heat. Got it. But all I needed to see was that. All right, so he tweaked it. That means it ain't right. You know what I mean? Like, he did just have surgery, you know, a a month or two ago. And we already know about him that conditioning has never been his best friend. You know, like conditioning has always been question mark. And so he does wear down. He does get tired. Now, he's a great player who's going to score 30 and 12 with his eyes closed, right? We know this. Mm -hmm. But I also know that when he's not on the floor, they're not nearly as good a team. So I got four big bodies I can throw at. I can just keep hitting them and pounding them and pounding. I know that. And I wait and see if can he handle that pounding as we get deeper into the series. Yeah. And so I'm looking at it from that lens of the comfort ability on the road and their star who that little tweak told me, okay, and a huge brace. No, nah, mm. let's see if he can do on one leg, what he had mail do on two, which is have great playoff yeah. success. That's where I'm going. Now the fear is Nick nurse junk defenses, yeah. really smart like that. Kelly Oubre throwing him at Brunson. You know, that kind of stuff. Maxi going downhill super fast. They have a hard time keeping downhill guards in front of them. You know, this is a nightmare right. matchup. It still is. But if you're, if you're comparing them, I want nothing to do with Eric Spolster. I want nothing to do with Bam Adebayo and his legs stepping on people yeah, and kicking yeah. people and all those things that we know somebody's going to get hurt, right? That's the stuff that makes me crazy. And just the uncertainty, Tyler Hero's back. You didn't see him last year. There's just so much going on with the Heat in that series that would concern me more than anything that I prefer to just not see them at all. And if I can just one more thing, Mm -hmm. I would rather Miami play the Celtics because if I do see Boston later, I know there's going to be a bite taken out of them in that series that they play against Miami. So that's that's that, that's how I broke it down. I'm convincing myself in my head that's the way I want to see yeah, it. Yeah, so. not, not a bad way to look at it, especially when you think about Miami uh, potentially seeing Boston and, and Boston maybe getting a little stage fright there. So you, you just never know. Neither is ideal. Mm. I do think Philly has an argument as the second best team in the Eastern Conference with Joel Embiid, 31 and 8 with Joel Embiid in the lineup. And when you're going up against Joel Embiid, there might be nothing you can do about not having the best player in the series. And I know that's scary, but it's not like you've got some sort of significant coaching disadvantage with Philadelphia or something like that. Nick Nurse is a hell of a coach. Spolstra is as great as it gets. Yeah. But Nick Nurse is a hell of a coach and uh I'm going to say the thing that everybody ends up regretting saying going into the playoffs every year. I'm just worried about Miami's offense. Mm. They, they, they can't score yeah. Bo- bottom 10 in points per possession. And one of the things that was really interesting about their run last year. So when, when they're playing the Knicks last year in the second round, and if you remember, they beat Milwaukee in the one versus eight first round series. And during that series against Milwaukee, there are a number of times where the game comes down to the wire and Milwaukee makes these awful, almost unforgivable crunch time plays and Jimmy Butler just capitalized on it mm-hmm. every time, right? Mm-hmm. And Miami pulls away and they end up winning that series because of all those oh, clutch time moments. We just lost, and I'm uh, talking to... Steph. Go ahead, go ahead, Fred. Oh, I'm talking to somebody with the Heat during that series and I kind of mentioned, yeah, there are a few games in that series Milwaukee should have won. They couldn't. Mm-hmm. Person says, I hate that. I hate it when people say that. I said, why? He says... Milwaukee played the second fewest clutch time games during the regular season. We played, I think, I think Miami played the most or the second most Mm -hmm. Milwaukee tensed up because they never had those moments. And the heat for the heat, a game that was close at the end. It wasn't that they were super clutch. It was that a game that came down to the wire 
was just another day at the office. Mm. Whereas Milwaukee just blew everybody out through the regular season. So when the game got tense at the very end, Milwaukee was not used to the situation and Miami was, and you go through it again. Miami has played a whole ton of clutch games again throughout this season. But what I don't know what to make of it is that they can't score down can't the stretch score. of games. So like this person who says this to me is a really smart person who works for the heat and turned out to be completely right with everything this person prophesized. Mm. But Miami has the third worst clutch time offense in the NBA during the regular season. The wow. only two teams that are worse at scoring during clutch time games are Washington and Detroit. That is wow. not the company you want <laughs> to be in. And yet they're still playing all of these games. So I look at the product and I'm like, Miami is 21st in offense. Mm. They're struggling to score when they play through Bam at the nail. They're struggling to score when they play through Jimmy. They're struggling to score at the end of the game when they need points. And and yet they're still getting all of these things that it's like so reminiscent of what they did last year. And I'm just, I, I'm so worried about this point just being thrown into my face when Miami is playing Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals. <laughs> uh, but that being said, I'll just take Philadelphia because when in doubt, when you got, the best coach in the league as as one choice and the best player arguably in the league as another choice. I shouldn't say he's the best player in the league, but at least the reigning MVP is the other choice. I'd rather face the coach than the player. 